Welcome to another edition of Whips at Cracking's Weekend Racing Review Show. Uh, today we'll be covering both Friday night's races at Mooney Valley and yesterday's uh, races at Randwick. Uh, with me, I have once again Suman Hedge, the bloodstock manager of Iskander Racing, and on my right, we've got Matthew Zamet, a uh, respected form analyst. I'm also yes. the uh, junior vice president of Iskander Racing as well. And junior vice Former. president. Former. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, we'll kick off now with the uh, running of yesterday's George Main Stakes, the only Group 1 race run this weekend, and, and I'll let Suman head off with that uh, race, I think, mate. Yeah, well, uh, a bit of a surprise with uh, mentality coming through and, uh, and coming back to form in, in, in the race. Uh, uh, the race, uh, Triple Honor was the short price favourite uh, again, and um, he proved to be quite disappointing yesterday. Um, again, showed a, a tendency to want to lug in under pressure, um, and uh, just really didn't let down at all when he was asked for his effort. Was given a beautiful ride in transit by Boss, so uh, on face value there was no excuses. Um, they're going to check the horse out and see if there was any any issues there with his joints or whether there's some sort of secondary infection that hasn't been picked up. But um, if they can't find anything, well, it was it was quite a disappointing effort. Um, as to the horse, if, if there is no problems with him, um, perhaps he's uh, a brilliant, a bit more brilliant than we thought. Maybe he's a sprinter. Maybe he's a 1,200, meter horse. Maybe the mile um, he did that, um, you know, with no weight. Yeah, look, he, you you might be right. And and I, uh, to give you credit, you probably alluded to the fact that uh, uh, the fact that he's out of a, a nasa ball mare is a bit of a misnomer with this horse because yeah. you, you did say that he, he was littered with sprinting. Yeah. Um, family lines there, like all his family were all sprinters, but he did run a, he did run out a strong mile, you know, last autumn and 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 in the, the round with guineas at, as well. Yeah, and the round with guineas, and even yeah. last start, uh, he yeah. hit the line nice in on a wet track, second up. Yeah, look, but I really don't know where they're going to go with this I, horse. I yeah. think I think on face value it was just a Disappointing. extremely disappointing effort, and uh, they'd either be looking at turning him out now. Certainly, the Cox Plate would be off the agenda now off that run. Uh, you wouldn't think that he'd be able to turn that, turn that around. Um, but just alluding to the other runners in the race, um, I thought it was it was great to see Mentality bounce back to form. Uh, he's been a great old horse. The you know I remember him as a two-year-old winning one of the early trials um, at Canterbury and thinking, oh, this is a speedy squib, um, and he just went on to be a, a, a great two-year-old and, and improved as a three-year-old. As he's gotten older, he's become a lot more um, dour, and um, he he just can't sprint like he used to. So I think that's why. Partially why his form didn't look as good as what it's been, um, but yesterday's effort was was, was very good. Um, Desio, uh, uh, yeah, he's a good honest horse. Uh, I, I think in some degree that I think to some degree that does show us it was a fairly moderate race. Um, the fact that Desio is running second in it, it, with due respect to him, uh, Gallant Tess another a, a good honest performance from her. Um, I thought uh, Nick and Nero's effort was very good from from. Victoria. He ran home very strongly, although his jockey did say that the horse um, didn't feel right to him. Um, Dewporth was was quite disappointing. Uh, I think he should have, with that, with that weight, uh, you'd expect if he was uh, as good as what everyone's sprouting, he, he should have really been in the finish uh, in, in, a, in a race of that calibre. And he, he really didn't hit the line with any great gusto. He did have a setback, but um, for mine, I thought he was he was quite a disappointment. Um, the other's not really worth talking about. I think Ashley Carter, any Epsom plans are, would be would be off the agenda after yesterday's run. Good luck, mate. Um, yeah, look, uh, not not too dissimilar. I, I think um, uh, mentality was was uh, another great win by him. Uh, uh, same as Suman, I, I remember seeing this horse, um, you know, pulling and over racing out in front in two year old races and being mowed down by Casino Prince in, in the lead ups to the Golden Slipper, and he went on to win the Champagne as a two year old and. Um, has since then, I think he won the Randwick Guineas then as a three-year-old, as a four-year-old run second to Harada, son of the Doncaster, and now as a five-year-old has won the George Main. Um, you can take nothing away from the horse, absolutely brilliant competitor. I think um, while I certainly wasn't a person who had him down as a horse with a big chance in this race, I I'm not completely surprised that he won. He never looked, uh, in this pressure, in this preparation to date, never looked like he was ready to win any of his races. He was very big in condition and uh, needed, uh, needed the racing, and I thought even today, 
Uh, sorry, yesterday I thought he still looked a, a run short, but uh, managed to win. And I think, like Suman said, he's taking a bit more time to come good this uh, this time round, and he's taking a bit more time to, to unwind. I think in the straight as well. So you saw a bit bit more of a grinder there yesterday, as, as Suman said. Um, I think from the beam brigade. It, your, your point's well made there about Triple One. I think there are more questions than probably answers. Um, I did always have, I guess, a, a bit of a question mark over the horse at the mile at Ramwick because, as we know, it's more it's a more testing mile than most miles around the country. And um, he did sort of, I guess, get the wobbles in the in the last 100 metres of the Doncaster um, and was sort of pipped at the post, albeit by a champion in the Ramwick Guineas um, over, over the same course and distance. So I did think it was floating with a little bit of danger going there second and third up straight away whereas last time round he had a number of runs and he had a better was, grounding. Yeah, he had a very strong grounding leading up to, to those sort of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so look what I mean while I, I think plans are up in the air, I, I you know, I don't think you'd lose much by testing the horse back in distance one more time yeah. before he goes out. I think um, he still gets, you know, a, a very lengthy spell if he goes out after another run, uh, with plenty of time to come back for for another good uh, autumn preparation. But um, like you said, Cox Bay plans they're all off. But um, yeah, there, there may be another run there worthwhile. Look, of, of the rest, I'm I'm really disappointed that uh, the owners and connections uh, ran the likes of Ashley Carga and Drew Porth in that race. I think there was nothing to be gained. Ashley Carga four starts ago and less than two months ago was in a Kembla race, a Kembla Grange race, where he bolted him. To test that horse up against some of the, the best weight fresh stars was, was ridiculous, I thought. It's all come a bit too soon. And similarly to Dewport, nothing to be gained by putting a three-year-old up against the older horses at weight for age in the spring where they're barely three-year-olds themselves. But having said that, Matt, uh, three-year-olds have a great record in this race. Yeah, yeah, they do, but I don't think he's as good as, as some of those three-year-olds that have probably been competitive. Um, and he's like, coming off a setback. And he's coming off a setback the as well. Setback's probably... Yeah. The Stan Fox should have been his race, but, exactly. but you know that's enough to, enough to be said about that. And lastly, I thought um, Thessio's run was, was fantastic. Uh, I, th I thought perhaps maybe uh, there's more credit to him than, than taking credit away from the others for, for him being so close to the race. Just my take on it might prove a little bit uh, sh short of the mark, but I actually thought it was a fantastic run by him. He set outside what was a cracking pace. You saw Ashley Carter at the back at the end of the race, and he was still there fighting and only got passed by mentality in the end. That was my take on it, boys. Uh, Thessio... Just on Thessio, you know, he, he's been around the mark in these type of races for, for a couple of seasons now. It's not a surprise to me. I actually uh, tipped him in the placings uh, in my preview, so it wasn't that much of a surprise. Nor was Mentality's win. He's proven at the mile at Randwick. He's proven at weight for age. Um, Suman's right. He's just lost that little bit of that dash early in his preparation, but the mile does suit. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's... Not a very good George Main stakes. There's no standout uh, weight for age stars in the race. You know, Triple On has been groomed, but uh, you know, as such, but his last two starts have been below par, and yes, that was a disaster for connections, no doubt. Um, and and the others really. I mean, you've got Chieftain, Newport Stayers, uh, Duporth. With the setback, he should have been in the uh, Stan Fox, without doubt. I, I thought that they erred, and also being a Colt is why I think they ran him in that race. They're just trying sure. to get Group 1 sure. against his name and they should be a lot more patient than that uh, with the horse. They're going to ruin him if they don't. Um, and, you know, there's really not much else to say about the race. I, Asher Kaga, you're right, he, you know... He's, it's, it's all he, come too soon for that. He has it's been fast-tracked, but I guess they were just trying to test the waters with him and he, and he did carry 59 against horses that, are, that have been proven and, um, at this level previously. So the, the other point I'd like to make about Triple Honor is that uh, Chris has been training the horse for the Cox Plate, and and he obviously would have changed his his routine and his uh, his techniques with the horse um, for that race. Sure. Uh, in his previous campaigns, he's been just run at different distances and and and, and brought through. Um, he's a horse which has always raced very well fresh mm. and raced well at um, shorter distances. So to me, even though physically he doesn't look like a sprinter, he looks probably more like a miler or a horse that'll get over some ground. I think his entire makeup and everything about him is a sprinter and I think as 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 the years go on he'll he'll be a yeah, I, sprinter. And similarly the you know you mentioned a few things would change to make the horse uh, a, a cox plate prospect. Also obviously his racing pattern's been changed. I mean yeah. one you and I often spoke spoke about his best asset was his gate speed um, and the, the ability for him to put himself into the race and be a tactical yeah. player. Uh, he'd often lead or sit just off the pace in, in his races and that, that advantage has been taken away from him in, in Okay, I think that's a wrap on uh, George Wayne. Thank you.